Hey there, traders and investors. It's Rob with POW Group. Welcome back in the pursuit of wealth for a daily market recap and an MJ sector review. Today's a review for Wednesday, May 5th. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing as the topic of the day, Sundial acquiring Inner Spirit Holdings and Ish was up big today. So congrats to the bulls first and foremost. So once again, going to do the broader market in the MJ video all in one. I'll put some timestamps in the description below as well. But before we jump in, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. So we'll start off with the article here. We'll look at some other news and events, and then we'll jump into some charting. And just taking a look at this agreement, it was valued at $131 million for the total transaction agreement. And the agreement is as follows. So first, uh, for each inner spirit common share held, 0 0.30 in cash and 0 0.0835 of Sundial common shares representing 0 0.09 per inner spirit common share based on the 10 day volume weighted average price of Sundial common shares on the NASDAQ for a total consideration of 0 0.39 per share per common share of inner spirit. The purchase price of 0 0.39 inner spirit common share represents a premium of 54.8% and that's based on the 10 day VWAP once again and we've been seeing these high premiums in these types of M&A deals a lot lately. So just moving on here, transaction has been unanimously approved by the board of directors of Sundial and Inner Spirit. The transaction is expected to provide modest synergies. Sundial becomes stronger and more diverse MJ company by acquiring them and their retail locations. Inner Spirit has successfully created a franchise based on a retail network from coast to coast. Sundial is the ideal company to acquire Inner Spirit and support the future development of Spirit Leaf Retail MJ brand, says Darren Bonder, founder and president and CEO of Inner Spirit. And they've shown a strong commitment to their management team, franchise partners and employees, as well as their growth ambitions. So in just over two years, Spirit Leaf Retail Network has grown to become Canada's largest single brand retailer with 86 stores in BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Newfoundland and Labrador. Spirit Leaf's franchise and corporate stores have created deep ties with their local communities and served 2.3 million guests in 2020. The brand has earned a reputation as knowledgeable and trusted source of recreational MJ while offering a premium consumer experience. And Spirit Leaf opens its 86th store on April 28, 2021 in Edmonton, Alberta, and is projected to exceed the 100 store milestone of summer of 2021. So this will be carried out of way of court approved plan of arrangement under the Business Corporations Act of Alberta, pursuant to which Sundial will acquire all of the issued and outstanding common shares of Inner Spirit. So again, similar to the Hexo Xenobis deal, and we've got a, quite a few of these deals, right, with uh, Tilray and Afria that just completed Fire and CGC, so Canopy. And just moving on here, termination fee of $4 million in the event the transaction is terminated in certain circumstances. So if you were wondering why Inner Spirit was up so much today, it's because the company that's usually the uh, acquiree um, being, acquire, being acquired they see a huge move. So the acquirer, in this case, SNDL, didn't see that uh, big of a move because it's considered as, um, you know, a, a short-term bump in the road for them because they have to pay a premium and all that. But Ish, obviously, having a, a huge day today. So congrats to the Bulls there once again. And I did want to see it. I think it said it was going to potentially close in the second quarter the, sorry, the third or fourth quarter of this year. And shareholder meeting is scheduled for July, 2021. So we'll have more details on that to follow, but I did wanna share with everybody, a uh, shout out to Patrick in our group for uh, making this a nice visual representation here. But essentially you can see that uh, he factored in the conversion rate to Canadian dollars. So essentially a huge discount uh, when Ish was trading at 33 and a half cents and that was like 134 percent discount there and uh, again once showed it to Patrick for sharing that thanks uh, for all that you do and if you are a part of the POW group uh, if you're a member then you would obviously see that and I know a lot of people appreciate that one other thing I wanted to highlight here and shout out to QC in our group for sharing this uh, I completely forgot about this so Hexo in their most recent financial statements you can see here that they have investments long term in fire and flower and inner spirit common shares so that is a good uh, good move on hexo's part and seeing some huge gains there uh, just taking a look at the fair value in the last uh, nine months or so but inner spirit common shares so 
One thing too, uh, and again, QC shared this, is uh, the irony behind this all, because SNDL tried to take, do a hostile takeover of Xenobis, and then, and then Hexo ended up acquiring Xenobis, as we know, and now Hexo actually owns shares of Inner Spirit, which means it technically owns shares of SNDL. So indirectly, Xenobis now owns a part of SNDL. So the irony there is at an all-time high, and I found that uh, quite comical and pretty interesting. So shout it again to Patrick and QC in our group for sharing those out. So we'll move on, taking a look at the private payrolls, 742,000 uh, in April, and that missed expectations, but uh, still better than the previous period. And they were expecting 850,000. So again, a little bit of a miss there, but it's still trending up. And Alberta tightens C-19 rules to prevent looming hospital catastrophe and triage. So in a long story short, essentially they're going to be closing schools, and post for the, at least for the next three weeks. And post-secondary learning must also go online. Outdoor gatherings cut from 10 to 5. And some store capacities, retail stores cut down to 10%. Barbershops, hair salons, tattoo parlors must close on Sunday. Restaurants will also be closing their patios and indoor person dining. And will go back to takeout service only. So oil drives towards $70 US as sagging US stockpiles and aid bull bets and a lot of analysts saying that they are expecting $80 into the summer based on the pent up travel demand and we're seeing a lack of resistance on the oil chart to support that. Toronto housing market stalls in April as prices slipped from record high and we also saw that Barrick Gold came in with a Q1 profit on higher gold and copper prices which boosted their revenues. So this is one name that I've been extremely bullish on. I think I've got an average price of around $19 and we're sitting around $22. Also, Stellar and Visa join forces with FinTech Startup to bank the unbanked. And we also know that Stellar has IBM as a partner. So this is going to be a big deal. Also, financial services giant Visa, Stellar Development Foundation and payments technology company Circle have all partnered with California-based FinTech firm Tala to boost cryptocurrency adoption in emerging markets. So this isn't really a surprise based on Visa's recent comments as well, saying they were looking to get into cryptocurrency in a big way, but we had some massive gains in the Stellar chart today. Just taking a look from the recent lows, we were just down at 30 cents there on that recent pullback not too long ago uh, when Bitcoin fell down to 47,000. I think we had close to 31 cents on XLM. So we're up essentially almost you know 100% in the last few weeks. But you can see here, everything is in a slow and steady grind up at the moment. ADA hitting new highs. LTC, Litecoin is extremely strong at the moment as well. And XRP working on a 15 minute ascending triangle. And we'll see if that breaks bullish or not. But if it does, we'd be targeting the 165, 170 area. And just taking a look at Doge as well. So hit a high of just barely 70 cents today. We get as high as 69.6 cents. And then we saw a fairly nasty sell off from there. At the low of the day, we we're down about 25%. And shout out to Pal Flex in our group. He has been in a trade with Doge and has held this entire time. And he actually sold at 69 today and pretty much timed the top perfectly. You know, we're not going to perfectly time the top every time, but that was a. Uh, that was a hell of a trade, and I know he's been in that since about four cents. And again, you know, not trying to knock Doge. It's great that people have made profits on it, and it's up, you know, 500% in a year, I just or 500x. So you know, just crazy, crazy amounts of uh, of gains being made across the board. So don't want to uh, undermine that, or you know, to 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 downplay any of that. But uh, just. Keep in mind that if you are entering here, make sure you have a plan or a stop level or some sort of support entry that you're going off of. But just taking a look at the bull and bear list. So Riot and Hive were down. Deep. So all the blockchain names today have been showing relative weakness with all things considered with the strength in Ethereum and crypto in general. But EOS leading the bull list today. And we also had Zcash, Tezos, ADA, XLM. So all up double digits. And alt season has seemed to 
have kicked off in a very big way, and that was mostly attributed to Doge and Ethereum. So moving over to the broader market. So before we jump into the MJ sector review and the inner spirit chart, I uh, just want to look at the overall broader market. So it wasn't a whole lot to, to report here today. SPY closed near the low of the day, and we didn't change the hourly trend. But into the end of the day there, we saw hourly consolidation. So we finally got our hourly consolidation and higher low attempt here. So just looking for a higher low compared to 411.67. And if we can break above the resistance here at 417.63, that'll confirm an hourly uptrend. And then we can be confident that the temporary bottom is in for now. And that came after holding daily support. But let's just take a look at the hourly chart. So at this point, it is still a possible hourly bull flag into tomorrow as well. So we'll keep an eye on that, but we need to change the hourly trend and we need to break the high of today, tomorrow. And we wanna see as much follow through as possible. And like I said, create enough room between us. So right now we've got tons of room to form that hourly higher low and it's still a potential hourly bull flag at the moment. So we're looking good, but again, not completely out of the woods yet. The dollar, Pretty much flat on the day today. We broke the high of yesterday just barely. But again, still haven't started daily consolidation. Bit of a doji here, an indecision candle on the daily. IWM was down today. QQQ, the tech sector, daily inside bar on watch. But again, it is definitely weak. But SPY, we knew to be looking for further continuation. And we didn't see that. We didn't see the continuation to the downside. We need to see more than just one day at pullback or else the bears prove absolutely nothing. But tech sector weak again today, but SPY held on. SMH, the semiconductor up 0.44, so almost half a percent today, but it's a potential daily bear flag. And we do have some volume to support that thesis. Tan solar sector was down Again, today down over one and a quarter percent, heading to daily oversold, extremely weak at the moment. And oil breaking out to a new higher high on the daily, breaking yesterday's high. And we do have a lack of resistance here up until 67.94. The metals, daily inside bar on silver, gold, looks like it lost the low of yesterday. Oh, we actually held it. So daily inside bar here. Actually, we broke it just barely, but pretty much a double bottom so far. XBI, biotech sector, continues its weakness. We got a low of 126.75 on the day today and support there at 125.90. XLE had a huge day, and that's mainly why SPY closed the day flat as we confirmed a daily uptrend and a daily bull flag which we've been mentioning now for quite some time. Lack of resistance up to 54.37. So again, if we do see further weakness in the tech sector, we'll be looking at the bull sectors like the XLE, the energy sector. And if we see weakness in that, then we can expect further weakness in SPY and you know, more of, a, of a, an aggressive pullback potentially. Financial sector up almost a percent today, 0.82%. And we are confirming a daily bull flag here as well. All-time highs. Been pretty much hitting a new all-time high every day for the better part of the last 10 trading days. Healthcare sector was pretty much flat, but seeing a little bit of green here today. Broke the high of yesterday. And still in a daily uptrend. Just looking for that higher low and all-time highs there at 123.96. Tesla still below 700. And on the daily time frame, we did break the high yesterday, just barely, but not seeing any follow through whatsoever back within that range from yesterday. And again, lack of support down to 591. So it's entirely possible that we do see daily oversold at some point here in the near future. On the bull and bear list, we had VEGA, EDR, and Dash. On the bull list, we had SU, OPK, and NGA. Moving on to ISH. So once again, congrats to the bulls and the Canadian sector. We had a huge day today. It was up, I think, 50% at one point. The high of the day was 35.5 cents. 
And we have a huge gap in the chart, huge volume, now daily overbought. But we do have a lack of resistance here until 38 and 44. And 44 being the most recent high, 52 week high. But it is definitely a huge discount at the moment compared to the SNDL price. But again, there's, you know, the risk of that deal not potentially going through. And, you know, shareholder votes, same with Zenibus and Hexo. But as the dates get closer to that date, the discount shrinks. And we can see that with Hexo and Zenibus, that discount is shrinking. We saw that with Afria and Tilray. And it got down to less than 1% the day before the merger was official. But again, lack of support here. So we do need to be cautious on ISH, Inner Spirit Holdings. And taking a look at the rest of the sector, NSP, PWR, and CanTrust leading the bear list. Zenibus led the bull list today. So again, Hexo and Zenibus standing out as, again, one of the lead bulls in the space. We've got Ish obviously leading the charge today, but Zenibus just basically tracking Hexo. So if you're wondering why Hexo uh, or why Zenibus is up so much today, it's because of Hexo just basically mimicking what Hexo is doing. And congrats to the Hexo bulls today. Hexo confirmed its daily bull flag like we mentioned from yesterday's video. And we also closed at the high of the day. We confirmed a daily uptrend. And that comes just after they filed a 1.2 billion base shelf prospectus. So generally when companies raise via base shelf, it's to acquire capital quickly. And why do they need to acquire capital quickly? Maybe it has to do with a new potential partner or another M&A activity deal. We'll have to keep an eye out. But the fact that we're changing the daily trend while other names like look at some other top tier one companies like CGC, still in a daily downtrend close to support. And we actually lost its low from the 21st of April. And here's Hexo after, and CGC was coming out with a $2 billion base shelf, I believe it was, and Hexo with a 1.2 billion. But look at the difference there between CGC and Hexo. CGC, not even close. We broke the low here, not even close to a daily uptrend. Hexo closed at the high of the day for the second day in a row, confirming the daily bull flag which would take us to a targeted move around $8 USD. And we've got a lack of, of resistance up until 850. So this is exactly what bulls want to see. And I'm wondering if there's some news in the mix here or something brewing, or if this is just heavy accumulation by institutions and whales and the market makers, because a lot of people are probably sleeping right now. And while I said we were a steal at $5 here on Hexo, um, I still stand by that. I was backing the truck up when that 1.2 billion base shelf news dropped and confirming a daily uptrend and daily bull flag. This is pretty much best case scenario that bulls could ask for and very healthy pullback and the aggressiveness of those bulls on that dip has been notable. And again, just keeping our eyes peeled for any potential news as it does seem like something is up in the background at Hexo. And taking a look at ish on the weekly, we have yet to cross bullish on the MACD and the stochastic, but we're right there. We're looking to potentially have a bullish cross of those here by the end of the week. We saw a 50 and a 100 bull cross on the moving averages. And again, lack of resistance up on, on the weekly until 44 cents. On the daily time frame, we held the 100 day moving average, which was absolutely perfect. And essentially double bottom there at 23 cents triple bottom. So one, two, three. And if you entered on a 100 day moving average support test and that triple bottom, you would have been heavily rewarded. Could have set your stop under 23 cents or even 20 cents, risk three or four pennies to make upwards of 10 to 10 to 12 pennies. That's some good risk to reward on that. So congrats to the bulls. Once again, we actually had another low here at 23 cents. So lots in the previous resistance. So old resistance became new support and that played out perfectly. We also held the weekly VWAP on this pullback. So it was definitely standing out as strong and holding a nice base of support. So 
Congrats to the Bulls. Once again, I know a few people in our group definitely took advantage and built some positions over the last little while. And again, I didn't, I had no idea that Hexo had Spirit Leaf investments, but again, shout out to uh, QC in our group for sharing that. And again, the irony was just absolutely too perfect. So CXXI led the bull list on the US side up over 17%. So congrats to the bulls there. That's another name that I've been averaging in on, on this pullback. And I think I have an average around the 140. So great to see bulls making a stand here. TAUG and acreage led the bull list on the bear list. We had Ian, Bam, and Bev. So Bam still struggling, looking to form its daily high or low. And it had support at 53 cents today. We held that as well. And just looking for that higher low compared to the 48 cent double bottom. And then we'll look to break 65 cents to confirm a daily uptrend. And we've got some key earnings this month. MSOS, looks like we broke the high of yesterday just barely by one penny, but essentially a daily inside bar. So we'll be watching which way this breaks tomorrow, but also attempting its daily higher low and trend change. And it's a possible daily bull flag at this point as well. And if that were to confirm, we'd be heading up north to around the $47, $48 mark. All right, so going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we shall see you tomorrow. Best of luck, and once again, congrats to the Inner Spirit Bulls. Massive day, and look forward to recapping tomorrow. So once again, thanks for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you after market close.